welcome back to my channel and today we have the very anticipated 2023 bullet journal setup video this is always my favorite time of year because i get to fill in my new bullet journal my brand new fresh bullet journal and for the next year you guys know again i'm using an archer and olive bullet journal and this one is a another 192 page dotted grid notebook let's just get right into it i've lit a candle i've got some tea the vibes are in so let's get started so for the first page i decided to actually use these two stickers that i've been meaning to find a special spot for i'll link the artists that um, made these two stickers actually either on the video or in the description box because i got them at conventions and they're so so cute so I just wanted to decorate the start of my sketchbook a little bit with some uh, some fun stickers and then I obviously, you know, filled in my name on the first page where it says this book belongs to and I always go real fancy and really romanticize my name. <laughs> I don't know if you also had this, but when I was in school, I used to think that my name was really ugly written out. I don't know if, if it was just a weird aesthetic thing that I had where I was like, some names look really pretty written out, but I think my name looked really like ugly written out. So I always hated writing my name on things. So over the years, now that I've like learned how to do calligraphy and things, I actually enjoy writing out my name, which is a very weird, small win for me. <laughs> I don't know, did you guys also have that? Let me know in the comments if this is a common thing. So I wrote it out all nice and fancy and then added some little sparkles in yellow. Again, all the materials that I'm gonna be using are either gonna be on screen or in the description box below or both. So with that page all done, now let's get into the next two pages, which are my keys and a little quote page. So as you can see, I have already penciled in most of my bullet journal spreads just because I am very precious about the first setup pages because I'm gonna be using them all year long. So I like to make sure that they're nice and neat bit of a perfectionist I'm not gonna lie it's not great but uh I don't know I I cherish this this time of year always so much because I just love setting up new bullet journals it's just really nice uh, so I like to cherish it and make sure that it's nice and perfect so using a fine liner I went in and wrote out my keys title and then made a little border with this lavender marker and then wrote in my keys and what each one of them means. As you'll probably notice, my entire setup and my month of January are going to be very purple and lavender based. I know I've got a bit of an issue at the moment with this colour. It's kind of taken over my life a little bit, but it's fine. It's an aesthetic is what I keep telling myself. So then I went in with a Tombow Duo brush pen in this sort of lavender color and started adding a bunch of little squiggly lines everywhere to fill up the empty areas of the page. This kind of squiggly line stuff has kind of become my branding a little bit for some reason. I've been doing it so much on like different branding things and just on my social media and stuff. I don't know, I just... I even have like a note a memo pad with this design on it. It's just, um, they're really fun to do and I just really enjoy doing them in my bullet journal now too. And once I'd added in so many squiggles, I went on to my next page, which I always kind of do a little quote on this page, something to sort of be my mantra for this year. And for this year, I'm using this quote from Vincent van Gogh that says, what is done with love is done well, which is definitely a mantra that I identify with and love. I think that things should be done with love and with, uh, with care, and you should be always proud and happy to do what you're doing and that those things often turn out the best. So that's gonna be my mantra for this year. What is done in love is done well. 
Um, so I kind of just did a cute little quote page using a bunch of different assortments of purples and lavenders and dark purples and um, making it look nice and pretty to match the aesthetic of the rest of the setup. And then of course I had to add in some sparkles on some of the empty areas around the text and make them look real nice and cute and add some, um, some pretty stars. And then I added a little border in a black fine liner just to sort of frame the quote a little bit so it didn't look like it was sort of floating on the page. Next up, we have the grid spacing guide, and you guys will probably have seen this. I've used this in the last two bullet journals that I've done, and I got this idea initially from Amanda Ridgely, the, the queen of bullet journaling, of course, and I use it quite a lot, actually, in my bullet journals, so I'm going to be using this again this year, putting in some of the, sh the sizes and the page segmentations that I usually use. So thirds and quarters is mainly the, the ones that I use. So that's only the only ones that I included in the guide. As well as just splitting the page up into two vertically and horizontally, just so I know how many squares down is the middle. And this is always really helpful when doing weekly spreads and, and monthly spreads down the line because I can just quickly refer back to this page and um, check how many boxes this and that is. And then I just added the title down there and just made it look nice and pretty since that corner never really gets much use and making, uh, making good use of that space. And then on the page next to it is usually where I'll put my yearly goals or, you know, my yearly resolutions, some people call them. I usually try to, you know, have a whole page for this just in case I feel incredibly adventurous that year. I just wrote out the title in a simple sort of sketchy font at the top with my fine liner and my Tombow Duo brush pen. And then I just kind of created this simple border again, like in my keys page with a purple pen and just left the full page sort of empty so I could have as much space as I needed. And just filled in the empty spaces at the top and the bottom with of course, some pretty stars and sparkles. Uh, no one count how many times I'm gonna say that in this video, please. Uh, you're not allowed, thank you. <laughs> And next up, we've got a very big double spread, which is the year at a glance calendar double page. So yeah, <laughs> get ready, because that's usually the biggest one that I always do for my setups. I was really happy with these two pages and I can't wait to fill in my 2023 goals. So just like last year, I wanted to do this sort of rainbow yearly calendar. So every month has a different color for it. And then I can use that color to highlight any important dates or events or trips or anything. And it just makes the whole page look really color coded and organized. And it makes looking at a whole year less daunting and scary. I find that it can sometimes feel a bit scary to look at your entire next 12 months in one single page. And yeah, it is still a bit scary, but making it rainbow and pretty makes it a little bit less scary. <laughs> I was using my Zebra Mild Liners to draw out the name and a little like highlight stripe underneath them for every single month in a different color going down the rainbow. And then I'm going to write out the calendar for every single month by hand, because I hate myself, <laughs> um, afterwards. And 
and look how pretty it looks with all these colors out it just looks so pretty and then i filled out all of these numbers this is a very chopped up version of <laughs> how long it actually took me to do this but yeah after 300 years i finally wrote out all of the dates for this year I then separated the page into two so that I could have a clear border between the first six months and the second six months so I'd have space to write down any important dates, events or travel dates underneath each month. And then on some of the empty spots around the corners of the page I of course added in some little lavender squiggles and squiggly lines to match it to the rest of the spreads in this in this setup. And of course, some little stars and sparkles. And that was it for my year at a glance, my calendar for the year. Super pretty and I can't wait to fill it up. Next up, we have my things to check out for this year. And I, again, find this one very, very helpful not only to just see what things I have been saying I'm going to watch for years and then never watch, <laughs> but also to like check off books that I've read, movies that I've watched, and also to remind myself of things that are coming out that year that I want to watch, read, or look at. <laughs> I don't know. And this year I actually switched out podcasts and music for comics and mangas because I got really into manga and comics this year more so than in the last few years, so I actually wanted to have a segment where I could write down all of the ones that I've been accumulating that I haven't actually read yet. <laughs> and I'm going to obviously be incorporating some of the ones that I never got to this past year and putting them into this year's, this next year's, so I can somehow, hopefully, get to them eventually. So then, next two pages are my YouTube planner pages, and for this one I actually upgraded it from last year's because I usually do a double spread for this sort of stuff, so this is where I usually write down all my YouTube video ideas, any YouTube voiceover topics, any series that I'm working on, like my classical paintings series, just, just basically anything to do with YouTube, this is where I'll plan it. And I actually ran out of space a little bit, or it got a bit clustered in my last year, so I actually wanted to add a little Dutch window, which I'm cutting out here with a cute little border. And uh, I actually wanted that Dutch window to write in any topics for my classical paintings in my style series, and then use the back of the Dutch window for uh, any of the series that I have on my channel. And this just frees up a lot of space for my actual YouTube video ideas columns over there on the left and also for my voiceovers and series page on the right. Hopefully things will look a little bit more organized on this spread and a less chaotic. And then I added a little stripe of lavender to the edges of my Dutch window just to make it stand out from the other pages. I just think it ended up looking so cute. I was worried about doing a Dutch window for this and making it look gross <laughs> and wasting a page, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Even added this cute little sort of lace looking detail on the border and it looks adorable. Of course, I added in some little swirls here and there on some of the corners to use up some of that free space and also to make it match the rest of the spreads. If you watched my setup from last year for my 2022 bullet journal, you might be thinking, is she doing exactly the same theme and setup for uh, this year's? And yeah, I kind of am. I just really enjoyed it so much last year and I'm still so obsessed with these sort of like purple swirls that I felt compelled to do them again this year. 
I'm sorry if it's a bit boring that you're watching me do kind of the same theme, but I really enjoyed it and I think I perfected them. And it's always nice, I think, to see them done when in different spreads and different layouts. And uh, I hope you still enjoy watching me do all these spreads. And that was it for my YouTube planner spreads. They look so cute and I'm gonna have a lot of fun filling these out as well. And next up we have some more work spreads. So I've got my shop planner page and my tarot deck page and more on that in a second. So for my shop planner page, I just did a little tile at the top to match the other ones I've done. So I did this sort of cursive with my lavender pen and then outlined it with this dark purple fine liner to make the title really pop and um, make it stand out. And then I actually divided the page into different categories. So I've got like stickers, miscellaneous, prints, books, and charms and pins and, uh, and merchandise, I guess. And this is where I'll write down any ideas that I have for designs for these or any packs or promotional items that I wanna do under any of these sections. Very nice and simple, but for these work spreads, I like to keep them nice and simple and functional rather than, you know, overcrowd them with design. So I usually just add in some little swirls on the outsides once I've added in the sections that I want. So for the page next to it, my tarot deck page. And if you watched my 2022 bullet journal flip through last week, you'll already know this, but I'm actually going to be launching a tarot deck this year. I'm about 70% done with the Major Arcana right now. I've been working on it sort of in secret over the past year. If you're a patron of mine, you would have already seen a bunch of the designs because I've been posting them on there. But yeah, this is just a page where I'll be able to continue sorting through this project and keeping it on target. And speaking of Patreon, <laughs> the next page is my Patreon planner. This last year, 2022, I actually launched a Patreon. So now I've got this other thing that I need to like organize and plan for essentially. So I did, dedicated a whole page to it. And I again did a title to match the ones from my shop planner and my YouTube planner. So everything's cohesive. And then I did a similar thing to my shop planner page where I just divided it into categories. So I have a, a section for promotions and different promo like events I want to do with my Patreon, and then video topics for my Patreon exclusive videos, and then a list of themes that I want to do for my Melon Mail goodies, because one of the tiers on my Patreon, you get a print and a sticker, and I like to use themes to keep them cohesive every month. And as you saw, I kind of messed up the title on that last bit, but it's fine. I just covered it up with an acrylic marker and drew on top of it. <laughs> and while that was drying, I added in some more swirls to decorate the page. That was it for my Patreon planner as well. Gonna be fun having an actual space dedicated to my Patreon this year, finally. And over there on the right, I then put my page for my bills and subscriptions. And this is usually where I'll list all the, you know, bills and things that I'm subscribed to and basically all the expenses that's coming out of my account every month or every year, like clockwork, because it just makes doing my expenses every month a lot easier. So I'll just sum them all up here and then that number I'll just put into my monthly expenses and I won't have to count these out every single month. It's just a, an easier way to sort my expenses. Boring stuff, but very necessary. <laughs> and then I just carried on the swirls from the uh, Patreon planner page onto this one. And added some stars and sparkles and that was it. A 
and then I just added some more bits and bobs and details to those pages and Next up, my last setup page for 2023 is my monthly gratitude log. And I did this last year and I think I started it the year before, but I found it really helpful. I just find it really like nice for my mental health to like every single month um, write out a sentence or two of things that I was grateful for that month. And I managed to actually keep up with it in 2022. So I'm going to carry this on into 2023. And I just basically draw out a table with 12 different rows and uh, write a different month on each one. And then at the end of every month, I can just fill out each one with something that I was grateful for that month. And of course, drawing out the title at the top to match the rest of the titles, blah de blah and also some more swirls. So I wrote out the title with my little lavender pen and then outlined that with my purple fine liner and then decorated the edges of the page with some of those swirls. And that was it for my full 2023 setup. So just the setup pages. I'm actually gonna go in to the January setup now, but this is all the pages that I did for my setup that I'm gonna be using all year round. And I did ask you guys on Instagram if you wanted uh, this video split into two, into a uh, 2023 setup and a January setup, but you guys voted to keep them both in the same video. So we're gonna keep going. <laughs> it's time for January. So on the page next to my monthly gratitude, I wrote out the uh, the month of January, did a little title page, and I'm gonna be doing the same theme for my January as my uh, set of pages because I already had all my purple lavender supplies out, so I thought might as well. Again, if you get sick and tired of purple after this video, that's completely understandable. <laughs> So I wrote it out in the same sort of font as before, in this like cursive bu bubble letter font. And then I actually did a little gradient. So I kept adding darker purples to the bottom of the font and on the coloring in sections to make it into a gradient. And it looks really cute. And then underneath it, I just added the calendar for January and uh, again, decorated some of the corners with some sparkles. And like in my quote page, I added a black border with a fine liner just to center it a little bit and not make it look like such an empty page. And that was it. And let's go into the monthly spread for January. So again, I did the same sort of font for the title over there in the top left corner. So I wrote out January again and made a little gradient. And then I used this purple fine liner again to draw out the calendar for this month. I usually do these with a black fine liner, but I felt crazy today. And I thought, why not <laughs> make it real colorful? So I drew them all out by hand. If, if you're new here, I don't really use rulers in my day-to-day -day life. Um, my weird flex is that I can draw s sort of straight lines freehand. So welcome, this is where we flex drawing freehanded straight lines. <laughs> I just think it's a lot quicker to do it by hand. And I actually quite like the sort of wiggly jankiness when they don't come out right. I just think it looks a lot more scrapbooky, you know? And a lot more personal and, and handmade. So then on the right hand side over there, I drew out my to do this month segment and my YouTube video segment. So that's usually where I'll write my to do list for that month and my YouTube videos that I either want to post or film that month. Just more spots where I can organize my life and basically see the things that I need to do in a visual manner. And then I wrote out the days of the week on top of the calendar. I use my Tombow Duo brush pen in a lot of these spots to add like a faint background. I like using my Tombow Duo brush pens for this because they're quite pastel and the colors come out quite light on the brush part and they just add a really nice tint to the back of some of my titles.
So then after adding a bunch of little stars everywhere to decorate the page, I wrote out all the days of the month on the calendar and added a little drop shadow to some of my titles with that same purple fine liner. And then I thought I'd do the same on the title page because I realized I'd forgotten to add that little drop shadow. It just, it's a very tiny detail, but it's a tiny detail that makes me very happy. So I went back and added it to the title page as well. It just looks super cute and it makes it look like a proper like graphic design title. And then the next two spreads are my trackers. So I have my habits trackers and my expenses trackers. Again, if you saw my 2022 bullet journal flip through, you have seen that I, close to the end of the year, I've started using a separated method. So I separate my personal expenses from my work expenses, just because honestly, at the end of the year, it just makes it a lot easier to file my tax returns. <laughs> and it makes it a lot easier to identify what were work expenses, what were personal expenses, and how much money I'm actually using for myself and for my business. Because at the end of the day, I do run a, a small business by myself and I have my Patreon, my YouTube, my online shop, and then my illustration and animation freelance gigs. So there's a lot there to like keep track of. It's, it's a lot of mind work. So the more I can simplify it for myself and make it easy to track, the more I will be sane. <laughs> so I did a cute little habits tracker on the left hand side. I did just a vertical one to save up space for my um, expenses trackers. And I just drew out some little icons at the top of what each tracker is. So I've got like working out, drinking two liters of water, reading, doing 10k steps, eating vegetarian and sleeping eight hours. And then for each day that I do fulfill that tracker, I'll just shade in that square. So yeah, then I just decorated the titles the same way that I did on the last few pages to make them all match. And then I started drawing out all of the tables for my expenses. And you will see here what I mean by separating expenses and work expenses. So for my personal expenses, I just draw a simple table like I always do. So a column for my description, a column for money coming in and a column for money coming out. And then for my work expenses, I actually separate them into categories. So I have my income table, my packaging expenses, affiliates, incomes, printing expenses, and then finally general work expenses. And this just makes it a lot easier for me to then fill out my spreadsheets at the end of the month and put them all into categories to see how much money I'm spending in each area of my business. And then I use the Tumble Dual Brush Pen in light gray to highlight every other row on the tables, which again, just makes it easier to track and makes it look really cool. Yeah, here you can see me adding the titles for each table and then like a little stripe at the bottom where I'll write in the total every month. And this honestly, for the past few months that I've been doing this, it saved me so much time. You'd think that it's very time consuming, but it actually just saves me so much time because I would be writing down all of these expenses anyway in a table, but having them separate like this, it's so much easier to count up the totals of each category and putting them in my big spreadsheet at the end of the year. And I love spreadsheets and I love this kind of like organizational stuff. So this is a breath of fresh air for me. <laughs> so then I added some little sparkles and doodles in the free spaces at the top to make it look cute. And that was it for my habits and expenses trackers. The next double spread is just my brain dump. So I just did a cute little title at the top. I like to keep these pages really nice and empty so I can have as much space as I can for writing lists and planning things out. Just basically using the space for anything that I need to jot down really. And I use the, these pages a lot for packing lists and stuff like that. So as much free space as I can, I will leave empty. 
So I just drew out a cute little title at the top with the sort of gradient design as the last few and then adding in all those extra little bits like the drop shadow with the fine liner and the little sparkles here and there to make it look real cute and pretty. And finally, the last double spread of this video, we're almost there guys, is my first weekly spread of the year. Very, very exciting. So I did a double spread for this week, of course, because January is always uh, quite busy for me as well, with shop updates and I've got animation work to do as well. It's just lots to do. So as much space as I can, I'm gonna use it up. So I wrote out January over there in the top left corner, and then I'll draw out the tiny version of the calendar underneath it. And then I drew out um, the different squares for every day of the week with a little separating line to separate my events from my tasks. And then I wrote out all the days of the week in a cute little font, as well as all the days of the month in every single square. And I usually make Saturday and Sunday like smaller squares and compile them into the same sort of quadrant of the page so that then I have a nice big quarter of a page for my to-do list that week because it makes my life a lot easier having a large to-do list area. Because sometimes, you know, you'll get a task that you need to do but you don't actually have a day allocated for it. It's just like, I need to get this done this week. That's where those tasks will go is in this area. So I drew out the title saying this week, again, in the same fashion as all the other ones to make it match. And then wrote out the little calendar, like I said, over there, just so I could see the calendar at a glance during the week. And then I you know it, say it with me one last time, added a bunch of sparkles and stars everywhere to make it look real nice and cute. All in this purple color. I am absolutely barfing purple by the end of this, but I love it. And that was it. Let me give you guys a little flip through of all the spreads that we did in this video. So yeah, I'm all set up for next year, ready to fill this out with all of my goals and my tasks for the year and just ready to kick some ass in 2023, you guys. Not to be a wine aunt on Facebook, but let's all kick some ass next year. Let me know if you were bullet journaling along with me, if you're gonna use any of these spreads that I did in this video, or if you're trying bullet journaling for the first time, it's always very exciting. I love to hear about it. And let me know in the comments what thing you're very excited for in 2023. I always love hearing from you guys. So thank you so, so much for watching. And above all, thank you so, so much for an amazing year of 2022. I hope everyone has an amazing New Year's Eve and stay safe out there. I hope everyone is around people that they love and have a lovely end of this year. Thank you so much for all the support this year. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I wouldn't be able to do what I love if it wasn't for you guys, so just thank you, <laughs> and I love you all very much. Thank you for watching, have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you in the new year. Bye-bye!